a revised version of Nissan's popular X-Trail SUV. At a glance, the changes seem rather minor, particularly the exterior which has had no more than a very light refresh. More changes have occurred in the interior, particularly as Nissan's new ProPilot autonomous technology will be rolled out on the model from autumn 2018. The X-Trail will be as popular with families as ever, particularly as it is offered with 5 and 7 seats. New safety technology will only add to the X-Trail's appeal. Nissan offers three engines in the X-Trail, two of these being diesels and one petrol. The petrol is a 1.6-liter which has 161 bhp. The two diesels are a 128 bhp 1.6-liter engine in the range topping 2.0-liter with 175 bhp, the engine we tested. This engine is available with both a 6-speed manual or CVT transmissions. It is also available with 2 or 4-wheel drive. The engine seemed perfectly suited to the X-Trail and its size, with more than enough grunt to get it up to speed swiftly. The engine is also reasonably efficient, with a 6-speed manual and 4-wheel drive configuration claiming a combined fuel consumption figure of 50.4 mpg with CO2 emissions standing at 149 grams per kilometer. Along with testing the X-Trail on tarmac, where the model will spend 99% of its time, we also got the opportunity to try it off-road. The X-Trail was surprisingly fun on this section, the suspension easily coping with bumps and ruts, only large bumps made their way into the cabin. The four-wheel drive also gives you a lot of confidence on these surfaces. The X-Trail also impressed us on road too. Despite its size, it still felt reasonably flat through faster corners. The steering is also well weighted which inspires confidence particularly on twisty roads. The only downside to the X-Trail was the rather unfortunate six-speed manual. It was far too vague and slushy, and would have hugely benefited from a shorter throw. The X-Trail really hasn't changed much compared to the model previously, to call it a mild fresh is being generous. It is not exactly a beautiful car, but then neither are the vast majority of SUVs. Yet, it is not an unattractive car and the refresh keeps the car looking modern. Higher spec models add more chrome around the exterior, which adds to the premium feel the X-Trail is trying to generate. The X-Trail's grille has been revised in a similar way to the Cash car, although it doesn't look quite as brash as that does. The X-Trail, while not quite as premium as some of its German rivals, is still a nice place to be. It remains a car which is functional above all else, and this is suited to the market it is mainly aimed at, families. While it may not have the plush feel in which rivals such as the Land Rover Discovery Sport have, it still has a well-appointed and practical cabin. You would not describe it as luxurious, but the Tecna model we tested featured heated leather seats, sat-nav and a new Bose sound system, all of which add to the quality feel of the X-Trail. All trim levels, except the base spec Vizia, which is best avoided, are well equipped too. The fact the X-Trail can be had with either 5 or 7 seat configurations only spreads the appeal of the model. While the third row of seats are not really suitable for adults, there should be easily enough room in the back for children. Our test car was a Tecna spec, the top of the range model. Vizia, Ascenda and Envision trim levels all sit under the Tecna. The Tecna starts from £29,595 and comes laden with features. Standard features on this model include electric and heated leather seats, blind spot monitoring, around view cameras, a power tailgate, intelligent park assist, DAB radio and a smart vision pack, which includes autonomous features such as emergency braking. The X-Trail is an excellent car, there really is little to dislike about it. It is extremely well equipped, surprisingly good to drive and can seat up to 7 people. 
while it may not be exciting to look at or drive, it makes a great choice for families wanting a capable, spacious and reliable car. There is little more you can ask from a crossover in this price bracket. Nissan's been teasing its 2018 Leaf for the last few months. Today, the teasers soldier on with a lesson in aerodynamics. The latest 2018 Nissan Leaf teaser shows off its silhouette against the familiar lines of a wind tunnel. It gives us a better idea of the shape of the Leaf's headlights and taillights, as well. If you've seen any other new Nissan from the last year or so, you've got a pretty good idea of what to expect on the Leaf. The teaser also includes a discussion of its aerodynamics. The 2018 Leaf is lower to the ground than before, cutting down on lift. Enhanced aero stabilizes the car in strong crosswinds, as well. The whole goal is to minimize drag and increase slipperiness, and less wind resistance means more electric range. Nissan will reveal the 2018 Leaf in September. We've already seen its headlight, and we know it can be driven with just one pedal. It'll come with ProPilot, a system that's designed to hold the Leaf in a single highway lane for a period of time. The Veeler in 2018 Range Rover Veeler, named after the decoy badges used on prototypes of the first ever version of Land Rover's boxy ute in 1969, is Latin for veiled, a light motif whose inscrutable modernity hits you over the head with its rampant subtlety. This is the design equivalent of silence so intense it's deafening, a theme that carries from stem to stern in Range Rover's first mid-size SUV. Squeeze the Veeler's remote and its door handles deploy from a flush fit with the sheet metal. Press the start button and a touchscreen silently tilts while two other TFTs come to life. Set it in motion, and the all-new, 2018 Veeler slices through the air with a drag coefficient of 0.32, making it the slipperiest Land Rover in history, while riding on an air suspension with a perfect 50-50 balance. In case you haven't already caught the prevailing theme of understatement, Range Rover reps are quick to tout that the new Veeler is an exercise in minimalism, reductionism, in just about any other ism you might ascribe to a Brancusi sculpture in polished brass. Long and low, flush and taut, the Veeler looks remarkably balanced from almost any angle. A visual portmanteau that blends the top dog Range Rover's elegant gravitas with the touch of the smaller Evix angularity, this newcomer's form factor exudes a sense of that thing you didn't know you needed, a certain Cupertino esque je ne sais quoi. But the idea of elegance, at least in its abstract form, is far from my transom as I maneuver the Veeler down a jagged off-road course through a glaciated Norwegian valley near the Wagnerian Trollstigen Pass. My tester, a top-of-the-heap first edition version saddled with a $90,295 sticker price, rides on massive 22-inch 265-40 tires, visually beefy, but suboptimal kit for off-tarmac duty. Beneath the Veeler's pretty skin is a modified version of the Jaguar F-Pace's mostly aluminum chassis that's been reinforced for off-road competence and is further bolstered by a Land Rover's Terrain Response 2 system, which orchestrates goodies like an active rear locking differential, low traction launch system, hill descent control, and an available air suspension with adaptive shocks, standard on V6 models all of which work in conjunction with stability control. The system maximizes traction by monitoring wheel movement 500 times a second, a feature which helps enable the Veeler's billy goat-like grip on the loose rocks below. While its approach angle, breakover angle, and wading depth are eclipsed by the more rugged Discovery, Veeler holds its own when articulating over uneven, steep, and dirty surfaces. Off-road aptitude is, of course, integral to Land Rover's brand narrative, and the Veeler's relative capability is reassuring given its supermodel looks. After all, what good is great bone structure if it houses a dumb brain? Also encouraging is the panoply of assistant systems, front, side, and rear-facing cameras as well as info including steering wheel position, the slope tilt of the terrain 
suspension travel, and torque distribution. Perform a water crossing and there's even a weight sensing display with a graphical representation of how close you are to reaching the maximum depth of 25.6 inches. If you can't be bothered to peel your eyes away from the view, key info is projected via the viewer's head-up display. Merge onto the road and wipe the light dusting off the glass panel displays, and not surprisingly, Vieler plays the part of Boulevardier more convincingly. It manages small dips and big bumps with a level of composure closer and air suspension equipped Range Rover Sport, which is roughly 2 inches longer, bumper to bumper, than the Evoque, which measures 17 inches shorter. Vila rides large with a view of its domed hood occupying a lower portion of the windshield's letterboxed vantage point. She's a big girl no doubt, but despite its 4,471 pounds curb weight, the four-cylinder diesel drops to 4,359 pounds. Four-cylinder gas versions tip the scales at 4,217 pounds. Direction changes take place with relative ease, that's thanks in part to its adaptable suspension, low-profile street tires, and a brake vectoring system that squeezes the inside calipers to help rotate the vehicle. The supercharged 3.0-liter V6's 380 horsepower, 332 pounds FT output can scoot Vila to 60 mph in a respectable 5.3 seconds, but that acceleration feels buttery and predictable thanks to the engine's linear power delivery and the ZF8 speed smooth shift action. Driving modes can be switched via the lower touchscreen panel or physical dials which double as HVAC controllers. While preset drive modes are easy enough to set, the bottom capacitive touchscreen also enables all parameters, engine, transmission, suspension, etc. to be displayed and adjusted at one, which might quell some critics who might resent the electronic interface overload. The quality of the screen image is exceptional, with crisp, vivid high-resolution graphics and pleasantly illustrated vehicle photography to support the settings, witness various versions of artfully depicted Vila kissed with studio-like light. The vehicle's multi-function instrument panel ahead of the driver is sharp enough, as are the two central screens, but despite the relatively seamless integration and easy access to most important data points, there's something lost with the abandonment of physical gauges. The screens glow vivaciously in daylight and their seemingly frictionless surfaces dim to a slick, black blankness when switched off, but this digitalization marks the end of a great era of mechanically analog information transfer. Additionally, there's no haptic feedback when you touch those screens and sometimes, especially when G-forces interfere with the task at hand, it takes a double tap to push those small virtual buttons. The world's most glamorous brands, Rolls-Royce, Bentley, and Mercedes-Benz among them, have taken to fully or near fully digital displays, so it's no shock Land Rover has finally climbed aboard as well. At least the two real rotary dials take over some of the functionality and can be configured to control different functions. There's also a smaller physical dial allowing for quick volume or power adjustments. The interior of our first edition Vieler plays a convincingly plush mini-me to the range-topping Range Rover. With soft Windsor leather across the doors, steering wheel, and the brand's so-called full-width unbroken beam dashboard, there's a sense of specialness and luxury that's rounded out by an Alcantara headliner and details like cut diamond perforations, which form a subtle array of union jacks across the seat centers. Chief designer of color and materials Amy Frostella says the pattern was greenlit after it occurred by happenstance, though there appear to be few accidents in the execution of the Vieler. Some choices are a tad trendy, witness the copper bumper blades and fender vents, but our tester also offered no shortage of lovely fashion-forward details, from the sharply carved Matrix laser LED headlamps to the flux silver satin paint, which is only available on first edition models, capped at 500 units for the US.
Another pleasant touch is Range Rover's first textile trim to be positioned on the same level as leather, a hide-free option that's available as a no-cost alternative to the top-tier Windsor trim. Vaderet, a Danish company that has supplied high-end furniture manufacturers like Noel and Vitra, manufactures the wool polyester blend that feels and looks like an expensive men's suit. The polyester portion softens the tactility and helps with wickability. Early samples with a higher wool ratio didn't pass Land Rover's fogging test. The accenting micro cloth is manufactured from recycled bottles but creates a convincing doppelganger for suede. I don't want to call this a fringe activity, Frascella says, referring to the alternative interior, because the fringe is starting to become the norm. Being a vegan or a vegetarian, nobody really questions that anymore. That said, when Land Rover chief designer Jerry McGovern approved the fabric option, he led Frascella's design team to a decidedly old-world source for further inspiration, his Saville Rotaler. The Veeler's subtext might be subtlety, but a recurrent thread is a shock of the new that, mostly, peacefully coexists with the comfort of tradition. Though we have yet to experience lower-end, higher-volume models like the base four-cylinder gas, $50,895, four-cylinder diesel, $57,195, or base supercharged V6, $65,195, the top-line Veeler First Edition knocks it out of the park as a both an instrument of utility and an object of desire.